Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGarGar.com. In this video, we are going to look at how to use the VLOOKUP function to return the last match in a list. Now, we all know the VLOOKUP function is a tremendous function. It's extremely useful, but it has its limitations. And one of those might be that it can only return the first match that it finds in a list. So if you have a, something you're looking for, such as a name or ID, that occurs multiple times in a list, VLOOKUP may not cut it for what you want. And in this example, as I say, we're going to use one to find the last match in a list as opposed to the first. This formula can easily be adapted if you're trying to get it to return you know, the second match or the third or the fifth match or whatever you may require depending on what you're doing. So, for this to happen, what we've got in this spreadsheet as our example is in cell H4, I have 1094, which is a customer ID. And my goal is to return the total for that order for that customer, the last order that that customer placed. When we look at the table, I can see that 1094 occurs three times. The first one, in the second row there, the second occurrence in the eighth row, and then they occur again the last time in the 15th row. So I want this VLOOKUP to return 9650 because I'm looking at the last occurrence. Now yes, maybe we don't need VLOOKUP, I could just sort the list uh, or filter the list and sort it and different techniques to find the last one. You know, if I sort it the other way around, then obviously the last one will become the first one. But you know, tasks like that are not always feasible depending why you're doing this. So we're heading for VLOOKUP. So this is going to require three different formulas to get the job done. The first thing we're going to do in cell I1 is we're going to find out how many matches there are. Now, for me to return the last match, I need to know how many are there. So, if I zoom in on cell I1 for a moment to make it easier to see on our screen, I'm going to put a COUNTIF function in there to count column C every occurrence of H4, the ID I'm looking for. So if I run that, that should just tell me that 1094 occurs three times, which we know as being true. Uh, and that will work as when we do the VLOOKUP, I'm trying to find out the third instance, i.e. the last one. Now, the second step is that I need to assign a unique value to each order. So at the moment, the customer ID is not unique. It is for a customer, but it occurs multiple times in the list. So the plan is to insert a new column, what's typically called a helper column, because the only reason I'm creating this is to set it up for VLOOKUP. It has no more benefits to us than that. I might label it ID and instance. Whoops. Although this is not hugely important. And I'm going to write a formula in there to concatenate, to kind of join together the ID, 1094, and the instance of it in this list. So that one there will become 10941. But then further down, that will be 23911 And when we get to here, that will be 10942, because it's the second occurrence of Hanari Karnes 1094. Okay, so here we go. Cell D2, I'm going to write equals C2, the ID, a ampersand, so that concatenation operator, the ampersand, and then I'm going to write another count if function. The count if function is so, so useful. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video uh, to uh, a blog post where I mention different examples of count if in action. Such a versatile, one of Excel's best functions. Okay, here I need to provide it with a range. I'm using it now to create a unique value. So I'm going to put C2, the first ID. I'm going to fix that, put some dollar signs in. And I'm going to have 
C2 as a kind of relative reference. So it's very important that the first part is fixed and the second bit is relative. When we copy this formula down, that range is going to change. So for this first one, it's C2 to C2. The second one will be C2 to C3. Next one will be C2 to C4, and so on. Comma, what's the criteria? C2. I'll know how many times does that ID occur to this point within that list. If I close bracket and enter, we have 10941. One. And as I copy that down, we can see 23911, and here we go, 10942. So it's a second instance of 1094. I now have a unique value. So I can copy that to the bottom of that list now. Probably get rid of these error messages before they annoy me. <laughs> Let's get rid of them errors. Just let me know that the formula emits adjacent cells, which is intentional. It's trying to say, hang on, you, you stopped at C2. Uh, it goes down to row 18. Why have you stopped at 2? So, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay, we now have that unique value. It's now time for the VLOOKUP. So I'm going to scroll over, zoom in on here so we can see what I'm writing a little bit easier. And it's VLOOKUP time. And the thing we are looking for is the ID, so I4 as it is now. And I'm going to concatenate again, ampersand, the number of occurrences in J1. So I'm looking for 10943 in that helper column. Comma, where's the table? Well, that table is uh, from D to F. So I'll make sure I start from D because VLOOKUP looks in the leftmost column across to F. The column number is 3. I want to return the total. That's the third column. It's in F. DEF, the third column of it, comma false, I'm doing a unique match. Closing bracket, and when I enter, £96.50, which we know to be correct. Zoom out a bit more here, <clears throat> just to remind ourselves, £96.50. And for another demonstration, I can see that... Uh, the name of this customer here, customer 31, occurs more than once. Just trying to find their other occurrence. There it is. So, if I change the ID to 31 and press enter, everything updates. That comes up and says they're in there twice. You know, these stay as they are. That returns 421, which is the last occurrence of that customer in the list. And that's how we can use the VLOOKUP function to return the last match. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please check out some of the other tips and tricks on our YouTube channel. Also, as I mentioned earlier, in the description of this video, I would include a link to some other count-if examples. There's also going to be a link to our Excel formulas course. So if you like this, the formulas in action, you want to greatly improve your formula skills, I highly recommend our online course. Until then, thank you for watching, and bye for now.